What's up, people? Sunday, Father's Day. Going to be picking up my dad to go to dinner in a couple hours. Somebody, I hear you in there. There's somebody in there. looks so like alive today this year it looks so different this year in general like healthier of course the temperature feels more normal too cooler much cooler than the way it's been shit going on in the world people <coughs> <coughs> some of it quite major doesn't seem to be many people talking about so something that happened recently within the last week is Saudi Arabia officially said that they're no longer accepting only American dollars for oil. Basically, they've officially announced the end of the petrodollar, which is what gives the American dollar the majority of its value, a lot of its value. It's valued by supply and demand. Less demand for it. And the supply keeps increasing as we keep printing it, right? It's going to make it less and less valuable. <clears throat> I mean, it's pretty simple stuff when you think of it. it. It seems very complicated and complex, these things, but they're really not when you think about them. Printing money is literally theft. Money doesn't have any value. You can't print it value. <clears throat> you can only get value from labor. In other words, the things that you want to spend the money on take labor and energy to produce. It's the only way to create value is through labor. When they print money, which money is only a ledger, it's used as a, it's the barter system. It is used as a ledger to keep track of how much labor you have put in to store that. So you can now trade it for somebody else's. <clears throat> Simple. If you print more of it without adding the labor, just to produce the, add more to the ledger, to divide, you're just dividing the ledger into more pieces. You're just diluting the value of the people that already earned it. That is all you are doing, is stealing it <laughs> from other people. You cannot print it. You cannot give people money by printing it. You cannot forgive people's debts by printing it. You cannot just, you can't. The government can't do that. They can't create any value unless they get a big group of like slaves or something and do a bunch of work. <laughs> they can produce value. It's, it's no different than you cannot print a diploma and create an actual skill. You can't, you can't say we need a dentist. Okay, go print up 30 diplomas for dentist. Here, you're a PhD. Here's your dentist, deg your degree in dentistry. No, if you didn't do the work, you have no value. You're not going to know how to do it. You can't just make it. You can't. You can't print value. <clears throat> the 
should start to make sense if you're not very familiar with the things, if you wonder about like inflation and why money always keeps going up, like why bread used to be 10 cents a loaf, you know, if you're talking about your parents or maybe your grandparents at this point. The fucked up part is those things have actually gotten cheaper. Uh, you know, <clears throat> when when a loaf when a loaf of bread was ten cents, it took a lot more labor to produce it, a lot more. Things are so automated now. Like one person can like fucking farm, plant, and harvest a whole big field, like like a hundred acres. Like one guy can do it on his own with some equipment in factories mass produce the shit at mass speed where a couple of laborers can do the work of what it used to take hundreds of people <laughs> it's gotten cheaper <clears throat> a loaf of bread should have has gone down dramatically the actual labor the actual value the cost to produce it how much work it takes to produce it has gone down dramatically but the price of it has gone up <laughs> Just think about that right think about it that's how much they're really stealing <clears throat> Not only, even if it just stayed the same, they stole a lot. Even if it took the same amount of labor to produce a loaf of bread as it did back then. The, the fact that it's gone up so much now, like that, that's how much they've stolen. But you're not even considering the fact that the price of that actually should have gone down. It should be like a third or something of what it used to cost. Or even a, even like something like a 50th of it or something. Like it, it, it's been that much easier to make. <laughs> like... <clears throat> That's how bad it is. That is why the separation between classes of people keeps getting wider and wider and wider. That is why the 1% keep the gap of the wealth. That's why they're accumulating, like 1% of the people have 90% of the wealth. It's because of printing money. It's because of inflation. It's the oldest scam in the book, man. They've been doing it forever. Every civilization that we got recorded in history that you can look about that, read about their finances and how they, they all did that. They all, that, is, that is the end of them all. They all diluted and printed money until all the, the elite, until the pyramid scheme falls. It is literally a pyramid scheme until it collapses. It's happened so many times in history. <clears throat> And you think it's bad? The inflation is bad now? If this sticks, if the world stops using the dollar as the reserve currency, in other words, if that's what the, 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 the currency they choose when they do a trade with each other. So right now, anybody trades. If you want to buy oil, you got to have dollars. If you want to buy wheat, you need dollars. If you want to buy rice, you need dollars. <laughs> Like, if you want to buy, like, you know what I mean? When we, like, talk about importing and exporting, like, mass trade that goes on between nations, they all use dollars. <clears throat> That's what they value and price stuff in, is dollars. Which, which increases the demand for them. And much like a pyramid scheme is needed, is it constantly needs more and more new people to keep coming in. To keep the thing afloat. Probably why they're bringing in mass importations of immigrants, too, to the United States right now. Like, they're trying to slow the effects of it. There is no other way. I mean, I get that's what they have. You have They have to. There's no choice. If you don't. I mean, it's a benefit to us all, actually. It is. No matter which way you want to look at it or what your views on it, the facts are it's actually a benefit to us because of the position that we're in because of our, the elite, the government. We actually need more people. And that'll increase the demand for dollars. More people, more demand, supply, demand. <clears throat> It'll also do, produce more labor, which is the only way to get real value, which is the only real way out. There's no way. They always, they, the things that they try are just like delaying the inevitable. They literally like, when they do the budget, they literally like, it's like getting a new credit card to pay off the other one. And the debt, but your debts actually keeps going up. You're never actually paying off the debt ever. You're just getting more of a bigger loan and a bigger loan and a bigger loan. 
they're never going to pay it back. They can't. It's not possible. You can't. You got to look at the math. You'll realize it's not possible. You can't pay it back, man. The whole world's in debt. And everybody always says, well, who's the whole world in debt to? Everybody likes that question. Like, who, well, who is the whole world? If the whole world's in debt, who's it in debt to? Like, every country can't be in debt. Yeah, they are. Because the country are, means you and me, a population that lives there, a citizen of that place. You know who we're in debt to? We're in debt to the elite, to the 1%. You're in debt to people like Elon Musk and Bill Gates and stuff like that. That's who you're in debt to. <clears throat> Those are literally debt notes. Look up what a fiat money currency is. It is a debt note. It is a note that they, you owe a debt. So they hold all, the, it's the people holding them all. The 1% hold 90% of it. That is who we were all in debt to. In other words, they want to spend that money. Somebody's got to do all the work to produce the shit that that much money can buy. <laughs> so we are, it's literally, that's who we're indebted to. You're not indebted to any nation. You're indebted to the elite, to the wealthiest people in the world. So 99% of the world is in debt to 1% of the world. Think about it. Something's got to give. Something's got to change. Like it, it has many times. It blows up. It always blows up in a world war, usually. Huge world war. Like this is literally what starts. What has started World War One, World War Two. It's like why Rome fell. It's, <laughs> this is what starts the big ones. When these blow up. <clears throat> when the... When, when the... They it just can't kept, be kept up anymore. People just can't survive. Like, there's just not enough. Like, it just gets too hard. Like, they just have taken too much. And people rebel. <clears throat> Systems fail. Things cease to, to be able to work. So, I mean, yes, it's huge news that people are going to stop trading oil in dollars, which is the largest use of it. That right there alone is going to put a huge dent. I mean, it's not going to happen like overnight. But if it sticks, if they're not fucking around, if they really, if this is what's happening and there's no more petrodollar, well, in a, in a year from now, don't be surprised. If inflation goes extremely, if you thought this was bad, just wait. And there is an answer. There really is. There, the answer is Bitcoin. The reason it works is because it cannot be counterfeited. You can never print more of it. You can't duplicate it. It's a ledger. It's the exact same thing as money. It's perfect money. It's, it's exactly what money should have ever been. Has always tried to be. It's something that you just can't counterfeit. It's just a ledger. When somebody writes down in a ledger how much you bartered for and how much you're owed back, <clears throat> it's just it's just not being able to go edit that ledger. And this is probably how all this stuff started. This what these this separation that we see today and the difference in class. It probably all just it did. It just started by the bankers, right? Those are the people that keep track of the ledger. The people that keep track of the ledger found out that they could cheat one day. I mean, they controlled it. They could just write numbers in it. They could just give more to people that didn't really earn it. They could give it to people they knew, which they might not have been able to give it directly to themselves because it might have looked obvious, but you know how you can just find ways around that. You give it to somebody else that now owes you a favor that does something that you know that you can invest in that now, because you know what that's going to happen or what the money is going to go to, like, you just, they cheat. You can't trust anyone. You cannot trust any human to keep track of that ledger. There isn't one. There's nobody that there's nobody that honest. There just isn't. And even if there are, they, there might be some people that are that honest that maybe wouldn't cheat, but then they're, they're corruptible. They're forcible. You can blackmail people. You can force people. You can threaten to kill people's kids, their wives, their... You know what I mean? What are you going to do? So if, you had, if somebody was going to have your child hostage and you ran that ledger and they're telling you what to do. <clears throat> I mean... Come you cannot have a person run it. I'm telling you, you just can't. I've thought this shit out for a long time. I started thinking about this shit in like 2012, man. And then Bitcoin came along like it just appeared out of nowhere. And I'm like, oh my God, 
that's exactly it. Like, that's the fucking what you need. That's what I've been saying. We need money that you can't... You, somehow you need something that you cannot fucking cheat. And that's not managed by a man. Like, that's by a people. That's like, you don't have to rely... Trust anyone. It has to be trustless. Open. That's exactly what Bitcoin is. It's just a way for you to use the barter system that we've always... We need the barter system. It's just too hard, man. It's just too hard to trade and barter with people with just always physically moving raw goods and services and not being able to stack it up and say, like, I don't want your stuff, but I want his stuff and not have to go through all of that. Like, you just... <laughs> There's nothing wrong with the ledger, man. The only thing wrong with it is the corruption of it. the corruption of it is what leads to the because it's just it is corrupt there's no way around it you can tell it's corrupt because it's just a simple truth you just simplify it did one percent of the people do the, do 90 percent of the work no <clears throat> does money represent labor is that just a store of energy and labor spent yes so something's wrong right something's not right about it it's not supposed to flow that way if it flows in its natural state the way it's supposed to it's pretty hard for it to get that disproportionate from each other. Everybody's kind of around the same, unless you don't do anything at all. I mean, you still have people that don't work and stuff like that, or, you know, you still have problems. It doesn't fix everything about people, but it fixes a tool that we use to function as a society. And I think people are slowly catching on to it. Like, not... It, for some reason, nobody can understand this. People just don't understand. They don't. They really don't understand money. And how it works and what it is. And, like, they don't even really, like, thought it through. Never really just think... You just, this is one of them things you don't think about. It's like shit that's right in front of your face. It controls every aspect of your life, for the most part. It's, like, such a crucial thing. Like, it literally decides whether you eat or not. Whether you have a place to... A, a shelter to live in. <laughs> And you never really thought about it. I bet you never thought of it through. You're not thinking about, well, like, how is it made? How does it, like, who's controlling it? How do you, you never really thought about it. I just explained it to you, man. You just rewind it if you don't need it. It's simple. If you don't understand, rewind the video, man. You don't need all the complicated shit. Just simplify it. It is that simple. All you need is something fair to fix it. We have it. First time ever. Never existed. This technology's never existed. I realized, I realized it right away. First time I saw and read the Bitcoin white paper. Immediately, I recognized. I'm like, oh my God. Like, the world has never had this. It's never had a way to not trust. It's the, it's the what? The fucking, uh, oh, what the fuck is it called? The general. I can't remember which general his name. The Byzantine, right? Byzantine general's problem. Look it up. It solved it. It's the first time it's ever been solved. It's one of them age-old math problems. It's never been solved until now. Bitcoin solves it. It's one of them things where it thought to be like a paradox or something that was impossible to solve. Like one of them. Like if a tree falls in the woods, does it make a sound kind of thing? That's what's like that. <laughs> like it actually, like we solved one of those. <laughs> it's huge. It's one of the biggest things that's ever happened for humanity, honestly. <clears throat> and most people either don't understand it. So I find people either love it, hate it, or don't understand it. Like literally, like that's what <laughs> people either love it extremely into it like like they're like they realize what it is and they're just like oh my fucking god like they're just you know like kind of gung home about it because they realize how big it is and how like how like how badly we needed it <clears throat> or they fucking hate it because they don't understand they think it's something about control and people and chipping people and government and, and you know what all that shit can happen but that's just going to happen either way. It's going to be a lot, hell of a lot worse if you're using some kind of fiat money. And they don't plan on giving up their fiat monies. They want to make them CBDCs of central currency, digital banks, or digital 
central bank digital currencies. Don't ever confuse those with Bitcoin. <clears throat> those are exactly no different than the current system. Nothing, zero different from the current system rather than the, that they use the blockchain for the transactions and to keep track of your ledger instead of their centralized computers that they use now. But they, it, it, the code isn't the same. They can edit it. They can, they can add money to it and take it away and take money in and out of your account, create it out of thin air. They can create it out. They can create them out of thin air. They can duplicate them. That's what's different. They are not Bitcoin. They are nothing like Bitcoin. I just don't think they're going to go anywhere. I don't see fiat currencies going away. It just... The, the way things, the power structure is, and the people that have that money, and the way people are so, honestly, like, just kind of dumb and ignorant and blindly follow, like, kind of what they... This, like weird brainwash state they're brought up in <laughs> sheep literally like sheep like this this shit's not gonna change that, that's not people are too dumb like shit's gonna stay just how it is man but you can try to get yourself in a better position you aren't gonna be able to help the rest of the world but you can help yourself telling you that would if, I, I would not hold large amounts of u.s dollars i mean you really probably don't need ever more than a couple months worth or something or some kind of an emergency <clears throat> like if i had a retirement money or something like if i had hundreds of thousands of dollars in, a, in an account somewhere in actual in dollars like just a savings you should buy bitcoins the value of that just even from like a few years ago from 2020 You've lost so much purchasing power in that. You've lost so much value there. What it, it doesn't buy, it barely, it barely buys maybe 60% of what it bought four or five years ago. It's going to do the same thing. It's going to even get worse. That's what I'm saying. I think it's going to speed up. I think it's going to get even worse. Not a good idea to hold. I don't foresee anything changing. They'll probably see those uh, central bank digital currencies. You'll get dollars like in a, in a crypto wallet, you know, your paycheck or stuff. Your bank account will just be like on the blockchain. Just the way it is now, it's on a computer. And the way you don't know nothing about their computer or how it works or the servers. or no, You just go to like an ATM and check your balance. It's the same thing. You don't need to. It's not going to. It's not like something you have to do or to be involved in. It's just gonna happen. It's just that that's what that shit's gonna be running with on the back end. But I think there's gonna be a change. The world reserve currency. I don't know. I mean, there might be another country that goes, that tries. But who? I mean, who's, who's money? Who, 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 which country? They're generally the strongest country and they always have the strongest military. That's the country who's that always been the world reserve currency it's the strongest one and they keep that position with their military that's exactly why people talk about that shit those aren't those aren't conspiracies man. <laughs> like like when america goes and starts bombing people and shit man it's because they they're not following the central bank policies they don't want to they don't want to be part of the pyramid scheme they don't want to let their wealth be just stolen be printed away by someone to have control over the ledger. They won't give up control of their ledger, man. They get taken out. <laughs> it's a much bigger deal than you might realize. So I don't know what's going to happen with that, man. I think it's going to go to Bitcoin. I do. I, I think I think what's going to be considered the reserve currency or the one that everything's really priced against 
is Bitcoin. Like right now, everybody prices things against a dollar. When they think, when you think about value, like when you know how money is so different everywhere. You go somewhere and it's like, how much is that candy bar? Oh, it's like 150 ruples. It's like, wow, 150. That sounds like a lot of money if you're American. 150 dollars or something. Like how much? What is? Are you guys using cents? Like what? What do you? You know. But then when you do the math or something, it's like, oh, it's like a dollar thirty or something American or whatever it is. I'm not saying I don't know what the math, is, but I'm just making those numbers up. But that. <clears throat> Like, for people to, like, get a true cent grasp of, like, the value. Like, it's dollars. People all think in terms of dollars. I think it's going to change to Bitcoin. Like, the dollars themselves are valued against that. Like, how much is a dollar worth? Oh, it's worth, like, you know, whatever it is. A hundred Satoshis or something. Or, you know. I believe that's what's happening. And I think they know it, too. I mean, the 1%, like, they know it. That's the other thing, too, is, like, things aren't going to change a whole lot because they know it. And as long as those those dollars still have value, whatever value they have, they can just keep exchanging them for Bitcoin. Even the people that control the ledger. Like, the guy, like, like if you could just print money out of thin air, type it in the computer, why wouldn't you just buy all the Bitcoin, right? And just... I mean, you can't really. There's a lot of reasons why that one won't actually work. A lot of people won't. It's not all for sale. Let's just put it that way. It's not all for sale. But at some point, that's real. I think it already is real. There's countries that are doing it, like El Salvador and stuff. Like they're literally, the governments are holding it. Like the country is holding it. The states are holding it. Like they're printing money that's and putting it into something that retains its value well the stuff that they're printing every time they print more is keep getting lower and lower and lower it's a simple it's an easy no-brainer exchange <clears throat> let me trade this thing that, that keeps losing value every day for this one that keeps going up <laughs> And the supply and demand on Bitcoin is going to be crazy. Like it's, there's only 21 million of them, but they're divide. You can divide each one into 10 million satoshis. So there's actually, I mean, it's a lot of it. <clears throat> but in terms of one whole Bitcoin, there's not a lot of those. That's not going to be something anybody has. Those are going to be like, like you're not going to know anybody that owns a whole Bitcoin. When they start talking about being like a whole coiner, somebody that owns a whole coin, that's going to be like, be like a rich person, like a whole coiner. That's somebody that's got like, that is a lot. That is a large chunk of the world reserve currency. One twenty-one millionth of it. <laughs> there are a lot more than 21 million millionaires in the world. A lot more. So just think like that. Like if, yeah, you want one twenty-one millionth of it. of basically the value of everything. If everything's priced against that, so basically it'll be the value of of everything. Like, but whatever that market cap is, like it's going, it's going to be crazy. It's true, we're nowhere near discovering the true value of what a Bitcoin trades for if you're thinking of it in dollars. How many dollars is one worth? I think people will be really surprised when they see a million, when they see like a Bitcoin's a million dollars. I think they're gonna be really surprised when they see 10 million, <laughs> but, and, and I think it could even keep going beyond that possibly. But a million to 10 million are definitely, I think in my lifetime numbers per Bitcoin. Damn, there's something to shoot. But yeah, shit's getting real, people. Things that looked 
looked easily predictable, but you don't really know when or how it's ever going to happen. You just know it's someday it's going to happen kind of thing. Like, I wasn't sure if I'd ever even see the dollar reach this point in my lifetime, you know, 10, 15 years ago or something. I knew it was going to do it at some point. <laughs> just not like, I knew it was bound to happen. And things aren't really happening. It's like, that hasn't been as long as I thought, even since we. It was only in, what, 1970 or something that we went off the gold standard? Started printing the true fiat, like, not backed by anything. Like, no, no real ledger. Like, gold was supposed to be the real ledger. Dollars just represented those and were transferable one to one with exactly what it was worth, you know, like. <clears throat> so there were only ever as many dollars as we had gold. That's why pe people always use gold because you can't counterfeit it because you can't get gold out of like thin air. I mean, you can find it, but it's hard and it takes a lot of labor and that's worth money. So people figure the, you know, the labor of obtaining gold is worth the price that if you go and find and bring new money into the ledger or kind of inflate the ledger, it was earned. It was done with work. So, I mean, it's not, you didn't just make it out of thin air. <laughs> In other words, and it's not perfect though. It isn't. It's not perfect, but it works pretty good. It's the best thing we had before Bitcoin, for sure. That, or even just like silver. They're things of precious metals. were the best thing we had. But now we have something perfect. That's probably only going to keep getting better. And the ways you can actually interact with it and use it. But most people probably never will. Probably one of the things that the banks and stuff interact with the financial people, you know, behind the scenes. Regular people like me and me, you probably just keep using them dollars. I don't know. But whatever it is, people, I hope it works out for you, whichever way you go. But that is my opinion on where we're heading. So take it for what it is. Peace out, people.